So you're 11 now, mm -hmm. and you get stopped and searched. Uh -huh. what, what was the reason? What did, did, they, did they say anything? Or? So there was literally no reason other than the fact that for an 11 year old, I was quite tall, quite wow. big. I've, I've always, it's only in my adult life that I stopped growing. So you had a growth spurt, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah so yeah. I've always been the tallest in my class throughout my whole life. Okay. Uh, even when I came to England, or if I wasn't the tallest, I was amongst the tallest in the class. Yeah. Right? Um, so, supposedly, I literally, uh, uh, I fit the description. I think, uh, I think that's the term that is yeah. uh, used. Yeah, that generic right? excuse. The yeah. generic excuse, you fit the description. Mm -hmm. uh, and I remember, for the first time, experiencing a feeling uh, of not having a way out of what someone had determined would happen in the instant or in the moment. I see. Yeah. Right? And obviously, as an 11-year-old, you don't have any identification with you. Yeah. Because you're 11. Yeah. <laughs> <Right>? <laughs> All yeah. I had was, um, I had my mum's credit cards and, well, credit and debit cards, because obviously, as she wasn't around, yeah. I have to be the one... You get me doing the looking after and that. Oh, were you at home by yourself? Or yeah, with, bro, I with, was, but no. it was me and my younger brother. Okay, right, right, right. So another aspect of culture that perhaps uh, not a lot of people might be aware of, uh, you're, when you're in this coping situation, you're mm -hmm. kind of forced to face situations earlier than a lot of people that might be in a position of privilege. Mm. Uh, you've got to step up. You've got to step up. Yeah. And, and you kind of step into manhood as a boy. I see. Yeah. Yeah, 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 <laughs> Do you see yeah, what I'm yeah. saying? So, yeah. So what, when I got stopped and searched, I had my mum's cards on me. And obviously the, the name on the card is a feminine name. It's not my name. Yeah. So the policemen are now looking at me as if I teeth the thing. They like did fraud. You're like, like, yeah, yeah. You know <laughs> and I'm like, no, nah, like, that's, that's my mum's cards. Yeah. I'm here to pick up my mum, right? I'm, I'm complying to what they're telling me to do, because obviously at the time, there's kind of like a sense of powerlessness yep. uh, in the situation. Um, <clears throat> so yeah, so, so it's, it was um, a very uh, eye-opening experience. I can and, imagine. And from that moment, I stopped living in dreamland, because I think <laughs> that's often the situation that you have over here in the West, when it comes to Af African descendants, or immigrants in general, we, mm. we have to understand what reality is and we have to position ourselves in regards to what we believe reality to be. So from the moment I got stopped in search at 11, I knew what time it was. I was like, bro, this ain't your place. Just move accordingly. You don't have to be depressed about it. Mm. You just know what time it is. So you kind of accepted it the, and the realization of what it was? Absolutely. Being, being the young black man in, in Paris? Absolutely, bro. <clears throat> Absolutely. Wow. And uh, the, the reality of the delinquents in Paris that leads to those stereotypes and those um, unrequired stopped and searches or those unrequired kind of putting everyone in the same box is, is, is a big conversation that I don't think the French government is having. Yeah. Right? What's that, the real source of the delinquents? You know, the delinquents is only just a, a, a reflection of the children not being, and again, you know, the conversation started over focus, right? So is, is the children not being focused mm -hmm. uh, in a, um, in what I like to call positive distractions, yep. you know? Um, everyone requires entertainment or everyone requires perhaps, perhaps downtime or, um, or just moments to chill. Yeah, yeah, not everything has to be serious, but when you distract yourself, you should be distracted by positive activities. Yep. You know, negative activities can only lead you to negative actions. Mm -hmm. And that's what ha has enhanced the delinquents that you see in Paris. The very reason why we moved out of Paris, actually. Yeah. Right? Um, my... Oh, so it was happening from back then? Is so, it... yeah, yeah. <clears throat> like... What, what kind of things? Just give so, an example. Um, the, the tower block culture yep. or the, the understanding of societal structure so you start in the middle of the city you've got all of the expensive bits mm -hmm. and it's kind of like you know in those movies when they classify areas by zones right so yep. if you remember uh, the movie time uh, with justin timberlake yeah right it's like the the center is zone one 
And then the more zones you come away from zone one, the more ghetto it is. It's literally the same reality. Damn. So yeah. it's, it's quite literally <laughs> the same reality. So um, when you're finding yourself, let's say, in zone five or zone six, this is when, as opposed to, uh, let's say, nice houses, you've got tower blocks where you park the single mothers with the children uh, and you kind of like uh, find this mirroring situations within families, mm. right? So in my case, we grew up with a single mum, two boys, 1994, 1997. Uh, and this was a situation which would be mirrored in a lot of families within the tower block, right? So, so it's almost like they group them together. Is that it's almost like they yeah. group them together. Yeah. Okay, exactly. Right. And uh, so what you find with tower block culture, just the way that it is anywhere in the world, mm -hmm. that's what enables the delinquents to start. You know, there's, there's no supervision. Uh, there's no cameras. It's just mind how you go, really. If, if you're not about this life, you've got to mind your way. Yeah, of Because course. trouble could come to find you, right? Yeah. Um, so, yeah, so you find that there's various groups of youngsters doing what they're doing, whether it is to get by or whether it's peer pressure that got them into it. Uh, and it's, uh, it's a mix that could mean that even if you're not affiliated with that lifestyle, danger could come to find you. Yeah. And the reason why we left Paris is because uh, when I was on the way to be 12, so between 11 and 12, mm -hmm. obviously this is kind of when you shift from secondary school to, uh, not from primary school to secondary school. And the secondary school where we're supposed to go to, a young boy had brought a gun to school. Damn. Right? And what, the, what age were you then? So, yes, yeah, so this would have, because obviously I left France at age 12, so this would have been, yeah, yeah, yeah. So the story would have happened when I was 11. Yeah. Um, and the story just went all around the town, especially the neighborhood that was involved with, you know, sending the children to that secondary school. Yeah. So uh, my mum finding out about it, she was like, no way, no way. I've, yeah. I've seen many situations, but my boys, me and my younger brother, they're not going to go to a school where there's such amount of danger because I could lose them. Yeah, it's, it's as simple as that. So she's now looking for a way out. And obviously it was part driven by logic and part driven by emotion. Mm -hmm. uh, she just thought out of the box, she's like, let me try London. She literally just oh, right. on random. some adventurous <laughs> thing. No, it's, it's, it's quite incredible to like even say out loud. Like she just said, I'm gonna go to London and see what's up. Yeah. So she, like I said to you earlier, so she came to London and uh, she met a few people and then she understood the system, how the housing system functioned with very little English. Oh. And she just made it happen. So she, she came back to Paris, obviously, pr after I had the situation with the feds and that. And uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, she just emptied out her savings and we came to England. Did that help then when you told her, you know, I got stopped and searched? Um, so I think it didn't surprise her. Yep. Because also, you know, she, in terms of the job that she was doing in France, she was working for the government um, All right. at the, um, like a housing association thing mm -hmm. where she would understand family situations uh, and do the accounting, all of that sort of council slash housing association jazz. Um, so yeah, so she would under she was very clued up yeah. in terms of what the atmosphere in France is really like. Yeah. Fair enough, because she could see it at work she as well. You can see yeah. it. Like, literally, bird's eye view. She yeah. has an, an understanding of what's happening for different families, uh, different uh, income streams for families as well. So, yeah, yeah so she knew, she knew what time it was. Have, have you been back to France since? Yes, I have. Uh, I still got families there. Nice, yeah. Um, so my, my dad still lives there with my, my sisters, uh, yeah. my aunts. Yeah, um, loads of family members, whether that's in Paris or Lyon, in many different places. Yeah, yeah. 